order. Uh, welcome to the Thursday, August 12th, 2021 <coughs> electronic meeting of the Ann Arbor Historic District Commission. Sorry for the brief delay, um, but here we go. The meeting is being held electronically to protect public health and safety due to the COVID-19 virus and to comply with orders issued by the governor, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services and or the Washtenaw County Health Department. We intend to conduct this meeting similarly to an in-person meeting. However, please be patient if there are technical issues. The public um, will be via telephone only. To speak during any of the public comment opportunities, please call 877-853-5247, toll free, or 213-338-8477. And enter meeting ID pound 978-6401-4515. This information is also available on the published agenda in the public notices section of the city website and on the broadcast of this meeting on CTN channel 16, AT&T channel 99, and online at www.a2gov.org slash watch CTN. So um, now we'll go to the roll call. Uh, okay, so uh, commissioners, during the roll call, please remember to state your location when your name is called. Uh, Ms. Leo, will you please call the roll? Certainly. Uh, Commissioner Beeson? Absent. Commissioner Epperson? Here in Ann Arbor. Commissioner Fortner. Here in Ann Arbor. Commissioner Keanu. Here Ann Arbor. Uh, Commissioner Rockland. Here in Ann Arbor. Uh, Commissioner White. Absent. And Commissioner Ross. Absent. We do have a majority that is a quorum. Thank you, Ms. DeLeo. Okay, so now we're on to approval of the agenda. Um, are there any additions, deletions, or changes to tonight's agenda? Doesn't look like it. So hearing um, and seeing no objection, the agenda is approved as presented. So um, now we're on to D, audience particip participation, public commentary, and this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about an issue that is not listed as a public hearing on this agenda. To comment on such other preservation matters, please call 877-853-5247 or 213-338-8477 and enter meeting ID 978-6401-4515. This information is also displayed on the media agenda and video feed. City staff will select callers that have raised their hand one by one using the last three digits of your phone number in order to electronically raise your hand to indicate your desire to speak. Please press star nine on your phone. You will hear an automated announcement that the host is allowing you to speak. Please state your name and address at the beginning of your comments. So. Um, do we have anyone? Kristen? No callers have indicated. Okay. So then let's move on to E, unfinished business. And we do not have any unfinished business. So we'll move on to F1, well, hearings. And uh, F1 is the first hearing. Um, that's 110 East Washington and Miss DeLeo. Will you please give the staff report? Yes. All right, bear with me a moment while I share PowerPoint presentation. All right. Uh, first um, item agenda is 110 East Washington for a, it is a sign application. This building is the first national bank constructed in 1929. Um, exterior features uh, include broad vertical bands of terracotta, banks of narrow windows separated by thin terracotta mullions, giving it strong vertical lines. 
Um, here is the spot where the um, a blade sign is proposed. The applicant is seeking to install a 20 inch diameter pedestrian scale blade sign for the storefront facing East Washington. Each sign face slightly larger than two and a quarter square feet. Um, this is um, slides from the slides copied from the application. Here you can see the front and side view of the blade sign. Um, applicable regulations from the Secretary of Interior's standards for re rehabilitation include two. The historic character of a property will be retained and preserved. The removal of distinctive materials or alteration of features, spaces, and spatial relationships that characterize a property will be avoided. Also standard nine applies. New additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new work shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing, size, scale, and archi sorry, architectural features um, to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. And 10, uh, new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property will be unimpaired. Um, there are also guidelines regarding storefronts, designs for missing features. Uh, the slide indicates what is not recommended, including incompatible size scale materials, et cetera, or using inappropriately scaled signs or logos that obscure things. The Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines do address the signs. Um, there are at least three that are appropriate for signs, such as attaching through masonry joints, not through the units. Um, installing signage that is compatible in style, material, and appearance to the historic resource and district, and installing signage that is subordinate to the overall building composition. Specific to pedestrian scale signs in the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines, pedestrian scale signs should be located near the business's entry, at least eight feet from the ground, mounted on an arm or hung from a bracket, aligned with similar signs, and not exceed four and a half square feet per side, roughly a 28 inch diameter circle. Um, staff findings um, articulated in the staff report um, include a comment that staff believes the sign is appropriate and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for pedestrian scale signs and the Secretary of the Interior Standard for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings. Um, there is a, a possible motion in the staff report. Um, I apologize, but I can read it or would the chair prefer to do that? It's typical that we, um, we one of the commissioners will read the motion. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we appreciate uh, that the motion is written in the staff report. It makes it quite easy for us to read. So thank you for that. You are welcome. Okay. And thanks for the staff report. Um, is that, uh, is that complete? It is, thank you. Okay, thanks again. Commissioners Fortner and Quijano were on the review committee. Will you please give us your report and recommendation? Sure. Um, it's pretty straightforward uh, when we were there. Um, you know, it looked like the there were some holes already present in the mortar joints um, that appeared to correlate with the, the bracket that's proposed to be used, <coughs> excuse me, for this new sign. Um, wasn't sure if it were, they were existing holes or prepped new holes, um, but it seemed very clean and through the joints, which we much prefer and appreciate. Um, and that also, I think it said in the staff report, but also that on that that block, really, there aren't any other pedestrian blade signs up until you get to Amadeus, which I forget the cross street of that. So it's pretty much the only sign on that block. So nothing really to compare it to. Um, that's That's all I have to add. 
Yeah, there isn't much else to say. The sign is going where the, the new sign is going where the old sign was. You could clearly see where the old sign was. And, you know, as, as Commissioner Cano said, the sign appeared to be attached appropriately through the masonry joints. Nothing, nothing much else to it. Very good. Thank you both. Would the applicant, um, <clears throat> excuse me, would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, and provide your name and address for the record. So you have. Um, Hello, everybody. Hi there. Can you guys hear me? I yes. apologize. I am not able to get on video. I'm actually driving. Um, we got the, the dates mixed up. And I apologize for that, but um, is there any way that I can continue on without video? If not, I can pull over and 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 try to try to jump onto video for you guys. Um, you're quite all right to continue on. Maybe you should pull over just um, so for your own safety, so you can focus on the meeting. But um, that is up to you. And could you please just state your name and address for the record, and then we'll continue here. Yes, it's Sam Abbas, 1165 Monroe Street, Dearborn, Michigan, 48124. Thank you, Sam. Um, do you have anything to add to what you heard in the staff report or the review committee report? Um, really, we just wanted to make sure that we didn't damage the building and we're adhering to all, all code. Um, we tried to keep everything in line with what uh, you know, what's, what's asked of us. Um, you know, we're just trying to make sure that we do get some visibility with our customers, especially with it being off of, off of main street. So it makes it a little bit more challenging during these times. Um, but we really hope to bring some, some added value to the downtown area. We think that the product and the menu and, and the vibe and the concept overall is really something to, to add to the downtown and we're excited to be a part of Ann Arbor. Okay, thank you for that. Um, thank you guys. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? Um, I'm just curious, the sign um, in the in the application, the example, didn't look like it was two sided. It's not symmetrical, so it's not, you know, it sort of doesn't work both ways. And I was just curious, there is going to be, a, it is going to be two-sided, correct? Yes, that is correct. It will be two-sided. I apologize if the illustration doesn't fully uh, exemplify that. I was also a little confused by the... Um... Yeah, the front view illustration in the drawing, it, um, I couldn't follow it really. It looks kind of, it doesn't look like the side view or the photo, but I will just say that the photo is very clear. It almost looks like the sign was put in place and then a photo was taken of it. And then I guess it, from the review committee, it sounds like the sign was taken down or it was just an extremely good Photoshop job. So kudos. <laughs> uh, if someone did that on Photoshop, but um, either way, I think it's it's clear to me, and hopefully, I guess if it's unclear to any of the commissioners, please please speak up now, or we'll just assume that kind of what's going up is is clear to everyone. Um, Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other yeah, questions? I, <laughs> oh, Sam, do you have a comment? Oh, was that Anna? This is Anna. No, yeah, it's Anna. <laughs> um, yeah, just to to pick up on that, I guess in the the illustration of the front view, it yeah. shows. The bracket in the center, uh, if I'm looking at the, the sheet to the right side of the page, is a larger, you know, just a dark black box, which I would assume is the sign. But then there's also a thinner white box on the left side. So is that, is the sign offset from the bracket or is that two different sides, uh, sign faces, or is that, is the illustration just incorrect? I guess is my, I don't know if I'm. The, the clear. illustration is slightly inked. The illustration is slightly incorrect. I would assume if, if that's how it's being portrayed. The sign is identical in size on both sides. And it okay. is just a circle. 
Um, so there's no reason why like any one side would overlap or extend out past the other. Okay. Maybe it's that one is a cut through showing the inner workings of the sign and the other is just elevation yeah. from one side. It's a little it's, tricky. It's, I'll, I'll yeah. just closer. Ask yeah. Another way is it, it looks like the bracket is 4.5 inches wide. What is the entire width of yeah. you know everything included you know sign lights bracket everything is it all within that four and a half inches or does it stick out in any way from that uh can i join in hello hi there who is this can you please state hey. your name and address well actually yeah i was waiting for that my name is ali and uh we're the sign company The sam is the owner we're the sign company i wanted to be talking as part as the Great. as the app Yes. Uh, Ali, thank you, Ali. Uh, my address is uh, 77864 Rosemary Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Um, I wanted to answer just the last one, too. I'm sorry, I'm joining from my phone. We got no internet. Over here. Um, it's quite all right. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, the illustration shows that the right side, the filled in, is the actual like side view because it's going to be all black on the side. And the left one shows like the 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 outside trim marks and the inside shows like how it's going to be constructed like just neon lights on the inside so technically both sides they're going to be the same the four and a half inches is the actual existing bracket that was on the wall and the 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 actual screws that were coming out of the wall we're going to be mounting the bracket back we're actually going to be using the actual quarter inch steel bracket that existed on the wall and fabricate off of it very good okay uh commissioners do you have any more questions for the applicant okay so we'll move on then we're going to do the public hearing next so we'll open the public hearing so this is an opportunity for persons uh to speak for up to three minutes about the application at 110 east washington Public comment may be made by calling uh, the numbers that I've already listed. And um, so, um, Kristen, is, is, any, uh, is there any public comment? No caller. Okay. So I will now close the public hearing portion of the application. And at this point, would any commissioner like to make a motion? Can oh. oh, go ahead, Kathy. Kathy, okay. yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 110 East Washington Street, a contributing property in the Main Street Historic District, to install a new pedestrian scale sign on an existing bracket as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District guideline, design guidelines for signs and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. Is there, okay, I heard it. Thank you. Um, so mm -hmm. that was moved by Commissioner Fortner, Fortner and supported by Commissioner Quijano. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, um, I'm, it, it's a little tough because I've got two commissioners here with no video. So no, I'm sorry, it's, from Anna. <laughs> it's, it's fine, I'll, I'll just, uh, if I don't hear from you, I'll assume that there's nothing. And um, okay, so um, I think that once we heard all the, um, the good explanation there from the applicant and the, the designer that we know what's going on here. So it looks like we're ready for a vote. Um, so let's vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. All right, well, the motion carries. Your application has been approved. Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. عندك انواع كثير هو 20 اوكي 
So um, we'll move on now to item F2, that's 514 South 1st Street. Ms. DeLeo, will you please give the staff report? Yes, certainly. Um, thank you for bearing with me. I realize I forgot some important information on that first application. I will aspire to be more complete. Uh, the next application is 514 South 1st Street. This is in the Old West Side Historic District. The owner is the applicant. Um, this house was built in 1892. Um, the Stein family lived in it um, first, um, and then it followed several other occupants. It is a two-story gable fronter with a cut stone foundation and decorative shingles in the gables. HGC has already granted a certificate of appropriateness in 2016 to rebuild the missing front porch, add a small addition and deck and other repairs and replacements. The applicant is seeking HDC approval to install a 275 square foot backyard patio, add brick on both sides of the center of the two track driveway, construct a six foot wood vertical slat fence along the west and south property lines across the side yard to the house and install four four by eight feet foot wood trellis panels intended for climbing plants to screen the view into the neighbor's yard. Um, I'll try something new. Um, staff findings, we have found that the um, backyard patio features blue stone pavers and red brick edging. Actually, let me go to some photographs here. All right, this is the existing um, two track driveway here. Um, here, with the brick pavers laid down, illustrates about the extent of where they would like to um, line the center and flanking with brick. I will also invite the review committee to jump in and explain any of these photos, or we can circle back um, when the review committee gives their report. I believe this is the backyard, and so this is the um, uh, where they'll be installing the fence um, for some uh, privacy and screening. Here's a layout of what they are doing. So back to the staff report description. They are, they'd like to install a backyard patio with blue stone pavers and red brick edging with two new stepping stone pa um, paths set in crushed stone leading to either side of the house, along with some uh, new plantings uh, and new plantings. Staff finds that the size, location, and design of this patio is appropriate for the large backyard. The current driveway features uh, two concrete tracks from the apron at the street to the back wall of a house. It's not historic, um, and they are, um, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the uh, concrete tracks are not historic. In a 2008 photo um, and a 1947 area photo, there is a walkways present, but not these concrete tracks. Because they are not from the period of significant staff has no objection to the use of paver, brick as pavers between and on the sides of the tracks. The driveway would not be made longer, as I mentioned. Um, here's a detail of the patio. And this is the same as in these, um, the application attached to the staff report. Uh, here's the backyard and here is another photo example of um, the bluestone patio pavers. All right, um, regarding the fence, the six foot tall fence will have vertical slats. It would meet the city fence code requirements for 80% opacity along the side of the house and 100% opacity behind it. The fence cuts across the front yard for 12 feet, four inches and ties into the front southeast corner of the house. The fence would have been approved by staff had there not been other commission application items to include it. And along the south property line where screening is desired of a neighbor's accessory building for the four four by eight wood uh, trellis panels are proposed to which grown hydrate to which hydrangeas will be grown. Um, on this side and here you can see the proposed trellis. Back up a little bit on the here you can see a box for a shed. The shed is shown for um, a future shed, it's a placeholder, and has not yet been designed and is not part of this application. Uh, 
All right. From the staff report regarding some of the secretary, applicable Secretary of Interior standards of, for rehabilitation. Uh, standard one applies, a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. Standard two applies, which I have already read and mentioned. This is regarding retaining and preserving the historic character of a property. Standard 10 applies as well. I've already mentioned it. It regards regarding new additions um, undertaken in a uh, certain manner. Secretary of Interior guidelines, building site um, ones apply. It is recommended to retain the historic relationship and identify, retain, preserve buildings and features as well as features of the site that are important in defining the overall historic character. It is not recommended to introduce new construction, which is incompatible, nor remove or radically change the building's features or, um, which are important in defining the overall historic character so that as a result, the characters diminish. The Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines, um, some apply landscape features not appropriate include introducing any new building, streetscape, landscape feature that is out of scale or otherwise inappropriate to the district's historic character. For paved areas, it is appropriate to retain and maintain existing historic driveways and curb cuts, including two track driveways. Um, and overall, Staff recommends approval of this application. The two concrete tracks are not from the period of significance. Um, and the proposed work is generally compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding neighborhood and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District guidelines for paved areas and landscape features and the Secretary of Interior's standards for rehabilitation, in particular, standards one, two, and 10, and the guidelines for building site. Thank you. Thank you very much. So commissioners Fortner and Quijano, um, can you give us your report, please? Yeah, I think um, as the staff report says, all the work is compatible and um, due to the sort of deep, narrow lot, very little of it will be seen besides the driveway and a little bit of the fencing. Um, most of the, the work isn't going to be seen from the right of way. Uh, yeah, not much more to add. It was a very thorough application, and um, yeah, just really the the proportions of the the back property kind of lend itself nicely to uh, not seeing a whole <laughs> a whole lot from the right away. Um, and it would just seems like very nice uh, tidying up of their their rear yard. So not much more to add. Very good, thank you both. Uh, would the applicant please unmute your, unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, and provide your name and address for the record. Sure, I'm Meredith Petty. I live at 514 um, South First Street. And was there something else that I said? That's good, thank Hi. you. Hi, Meredith. I, Hi. So do, you, do you have anything to add? Okay. Right, here's my husband too, Hi. Gabe. And there's Gabe. Hi, Gabe. Uh, do you have anything to add to the staff report or the review committee report that was just given? I don't think so. Um, basically, our goal is just to like be able to enjoy our, as she said, tidy up our backyard and make it more enjoyable. And yeah, thank you, neighborhood. Thank you, um, commissioners. Do you have any questions for the applicant? Okay, mm -hmm. no hearing no question. Uh, we will go to the public hearing then. And so now uh, we'll open up the public hearing. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about this application at 514 South First. So I've, I've read the, the phone numbers. Um, and so now would be the time to press star nine on your phone to raise your hand. Kristen, do we have anyone raising their hand? No callers. Very good. 
So now we will close the public hearing portion of this application. Would any commissioner like to make a motion on this application? I can make this motion. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Oh, sorry, Anna. <laughs> but, uh, uh, <laughs> commissioner Kihana, why don't you go for it? Sure. Um, all right. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 514 South First Street, the contributing property in the old West Side Historic District to install a 275 square foot backyard patio, add brick on both sides in the center of the two track driveway, construct a six foot wide vertical slat fence along the west and south property lines and across the side yard to the house and install four four foot by eight foot wide trellis panels as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, in relationship to the surrounding resources and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District guidelines for paved areas and landscape features. And the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation in particular standards one, two, and 10 and the guidelines for building site. Support. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Quijano and seconded by Commissioner Epperson. Is there any discussion on the motion? I, I just wanna make sure that was a, a mistake. It's four feet wide by eight feet tall. She said eight feet wide for the trellises. Uh, eight foot okay, let's wood check the motion. trellis. Let's make but, sure we've got it. Uh, yeah. um, Commissioner Quijano, does that, is there a miss? Titan, uh, the, no, we, it, there's no okay. description. Four foot by eight foot wood trellis. So. Yeah, I think maybe wood was misheard as wide, but. Oh, um, oh okay, I'm sorry, sorry. No, it's okay, but okay. good further clarification. Yeah, so okay. it's four Thanks. feet, each panel is four foot wide yep. by eight foot tall. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith, and thank you, uh, Commissioner. So, um, yeah, I think that that was, yeah, moved by Commissioner Quijano, seconded by Mich Commissioner Epperson. So uh, is there any discussion on this motion? I'm, I'm not hearing any. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably because um, the, the application is compatible with the, uh, with the standards. And um, I suppose that there's the just the question of the the brick pavers next to the um, the concrete and I mean that it seems like that's really what what you'll see from the right of way and since the pavers are not from the period of significance um, then there's really no issue there so um, agree any other comments all right hearing none We'll go to a vote. All those in favor of this motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion carries. Your application has been approved. Please note you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, moving on. F3, 239 Murray. Ms. DeLeo, will you please give the staff report? Ms. Leo, are you there? Are you giving the staff report or oh, I can't hear you? So are you are you paused or are you unmuted think, or what's going on? I can't see anything and I can't hear anything. <laughs> I think um, I think I was on mute. Um, Start over at the top, please. I know. Well, the, to the hour, if we didn't have, uh, I just got to keep the technical difficulties going. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as mentioned, this is 239 Murray Avenue in the Old West Side Historic District. It's a one and three quarter story gable fronter featuring one over one windows and a nearly full width wide front porch with a hipped roof and turned columns. First occupied in 1911 by William Elfring. Uh, 
the applicant seeks HGC approval to install a solar array of black on black panels on the south facing roof of the house. Um, I will go through. Um, uh, Maurice Avenue is here on the left side of the screen. Uh, I believe you know, this orientation is north south and the um, solar panels are illustrated in blue here and they are proposed on the south facing um, side of the roof. Some of the electrical meters will be, it appears to be on the north side of the building. Um, he, from the application, um, here is one of the cut sheets um, indicating the size of the panels and distance from the edge. Here are some uh, pictures from the review committee day of the um, street facade of the house. Uh, another from taken from the street. And if I have my orientation correct, um, you get a glimpse here of the south facing um, roof face where the solar panels will go on top. Uh, again, from the street, um, I, but I believe this is a little bit more of the north side of the house driveway on the south side, front yard. Um, here are cut sheets again from the application of the uh, solar panels um, Eagle brand and how they will be attached. Um, applicable Secretary of Interior standards include two, which I have mentioned, nine, which I have mentioned, and I believe, and 10, which I believe I've also uh, read aloud. Guidelines for roofs recommend identifying, retaining, and preserving roofs and their functional and decorative features that are important in defining the overall historic character of a building. It is not recommended to change the configuration of a roof by adding new features such as dormers, windows, vents, or skylights so that historic character is diminished. Regarding energy efficiency, it is recommended um, placing a new addition that may be necessary to increase energy efficiency on non-character defining elevations. Please do not design a new addition which obscures, damages, or destroys character defining features. Regarding mechanical equipment, it is recommended to provide adequate structural support. It is not recommended to not fail to consider the weight and design of the new equipment so historic structural members or finished surfaces are weakened or cracked. Also do not install a new mechanical system so that character defining its structural or interior features are damaged or destroyed. The Ann Arbor Historic District guidelines specific to solar panels. It is appropriate to mount solar panels at grade or on pole mounted or uh, ground mounted poles. In the absence of appropriate ground-based mounting locations, panels should be mounted on the side or rear facing roof surfaces. Also solar panels, it is appropriate to install mechanical and service equipment on the roof related to the solar units and their related devices. So they're inconspicuous from the right of way, do not damage or obscure character defining features. For sloped roof installations, mounting solar panels to and within eight inches of a roof surface. It is not appropriate to mount solar panels and related devices on primary elevations or roofs that face the primary elevation or planes that are highly visible from the street. Any other alteration or installation procedure that would cause irreversible damage to historic features or materials. Um, from the staff report again, staff has found the application proposes to install an array of 15 375 watt solar panels on the south face of the main roof of the house and a west facing rear shed roof addition. Black modules with black framing are appropriately proposed. The array is 12 inches below the roof ridge and six inches from the front east edge of the main roof. The panels on the rear addition are 18 inches from the ridge and edge. The roof already has black dark gray shingle asphalt shingles. The meter is located on the north side elevation and the electrical panel and AC inverter are in the basement. Staff believes the panels will not be a visual distraction from the historic house or nearby properties. Staff believes that the materials and design are compatible with the existing structure, neighboring buildings and surrounding historic district and meet both the Secretary of Interior's 
uh, Secretary of the Interior's Standards and the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. DeLeo. Okay, uh, Commissioners Fortner and Quijano were on the review committee. Please give us your report. Um, so this house, this portion of Murray is um, a high point and then it starts to slope down as you travel further north and um, the, the photos from the visit are really telling of the views or lack of views of the solar panels that one would get um, from the public right away. Um, the the west facing rear shed roof addition, you really don't see anything from from the sidewalk. Um, and because there's a kind of dormer in the middle of that southern portion of the roof, um, you really don't see much of the east southeast portion of the gable roof um, and it's just a little bit of the southwest portion of the roof towards the front of the house that you see but um, there is a quite large uh, evergreen tree located right near there um, conveniently uh, concealing much view there um, so we have observed on site that you really would not see much of any of the, the black on black uh, solar panels. Um, and then on the north side where the um, panel and meter are proposed to go, there are existing um, utility components installed at that location. So I believe it would be near all of that existing, um, those existing items. And again, the view uh, it's kind of middle of the length of the house, if not slightly further back. So it, it's pretty far from the, the sidewalk view. That's all I have to add. Yeah, I think the installation would be unobtrusive if you could see the roof. And there really is only one little spot where you can see the very front portion in front of the dormer. Um, at all. It's a tall building close to the sidewalk on a narrow street. So the roofs of the building are not really in your view shed. Um, and the, you know, as Commissioner Keanu was saying, the utility box is going to be where all the utilities already are. Very good. Thank you both. Would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible and provide your name and address for the record. The applicant is not um, in attendance. I thought I saw them a minute ago, but now they're not there. Let's give it a minute. Or we could, hmm, we could skip on to the public hearing while we wait. That's fine. Okay, so we'll skip on to the public hearing and we'll wait for the applicants to um, to rejoin the the call if uh, if they're attempting to. So now we'll open the public hearing for this item. Uh, this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about this application at two thirty nine Murray Ave. Public comment may be made by calling 877-853-5247 and entering meeting ID pound 978-6401-4515. In order to electronically raise your hand after dialing into the meeting, please press star nine on your phone. So you should press star nine on your phone right now if you wanna be part of the public hearing. There are no callers. Okay. And then still no applicants. Okay. Well, um, I guess we will have to march on here. Um, 
So let's see, do, you know, I, I guess we have to make a motion. That's what we have to do. So are, are there any commissioners who would like to make a motion? I can make the motion. Okay, that was Commissioner mm -hmm. Epperson. Do you yeah. have a flashlight or what do you? A candle. You can picture it here. <laughs> Just on your phone, you're reading it on your phone or something. Anyway, please proceed, okay. Commissioner Epperson. You just find it here in the. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> Take your time. Okay. okay. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 239 Murray Avenue, a contributing property in the Old West Side Historic District, to install a black on black solar array on the south facing and west facing roofs as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings. In particular, standards 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for roofs, energy efficiency, and mechanical systems, as well as the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines, particularly as they pertain to solar installation. 10 and 1 going to second that? Nope. Support. Okay. That was moved by Commissioner Epperson and seconded by Commissioner Quijano. Uh, and now we can have a discussion. I guess I'll just ask like, would there have been any questions for the applicant or the, the installer had they been on the call? And I'm guessing the answer is no, but were there any outstanding questions there? Uh, I just have one question. Okay. Then maybe it's more of a clarification and just because I can't, I don't see all the visuals. Yeah. Um, you said the the power panel is going to be installed on the north side of the house, and there's additional utility equipment over there. Is that? If I look at a couple of photos from the actual report, there's like the door on the north side, and then another window behind that. Is it around that area of the window, kind of below it? Ms. DeLeo, can you, can you possibly bring up some of the photos that we've been looking at? It sounds like Commissioner Epperson would like to see the north side, if you got a good photo of the north side. Thank you. It might be the photo, actually, in like the report. Page eight in the packet, but yeah. I think this might be the best one. I just, um, page eight in the packet. Right, yeah, on. so I, I can't see whatever's being shared on the screen. I, I don't have yeah. access to. Oh, right. Um, That's not going to help anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> the, in the packet, it, it yeah. is it's a decent shot of the north elevation, but there's a door and then there's two windows, you know, further back for the west. It looks like there's a gutter or something that runs up and an electrical or some sort of meter if I zoom in. Yeah, looks like I'm an assuming that's meter. the area. It's really more of a clarification. Yeah, we, um, well, from what our understanding me on the site, yeah, the. Yeah, wait, 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 go back there. Whoops. Oh. The, so there's that, there's starting from that front corner, you have the window, mm -hmm. the door, and then a, a ways, you know, some wall length there, mm -hmm. and then another window up high. It's just mm -hmm. next to that second further window where the existing meters and um, utility items currently exist. So it's pretty set back. But not the double window, but the single one. Uh, in between the single and the double. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Now it just says on the application, it says that there's an electrical panel and an AC inverter located in the basement. So that's in the basement. It's not, and then there's an arrow pointing to the meter. And then there's another arrow that says new PV AC disconnect within five feet of meter. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess to really be, Mm -hmm. it'll be within five feet of that meter mm -hmm. but it's i suppose it could be five feet to the front of the house or five feet to the back of the house I mean, but it's still well back uh from the front of the house um and, and that's the op drive side is on the opposite side so that's correct right mm -hmm. okay 
Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, I should say that uh, from the commissioners. No. Okay. Uh, it's unfortunate that the the applicants aren't here, um, but I think that we've seen many of these solar panel applications by this point. And so um, I think that that um, this one feels like several others enough that we can probably move forward with the vote. Um, we've even seen some on Murray. But uh, anyway, um, any other comments before we move to a vote here? Okay, well, let's vote. Um, all those in favor of this motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion carries. The application has been approved. Okay. Um, so now we'll move on to item F4, 2781 Packard. Ms. Delia, will you please give the staff report? Certainly. I'm not muted. Confirm that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> this is 2781 Packard Road in the and in the Cobblestone Farm Historic District. A little bit of background. This is the Tickner Campbell House known as Cobblestone Farm because of the unique construction technique of the Cobblestone House on the property. It was built by uh, Dr. Tickner in 1844 in the classic revival style. It's one of the finest examples, uh, finest of the few examples of cobblestone construction in Michigan. Together with the wooden kitchen L at the rear, which you can kind of see in this photo, uh, it forms an unusually fine example of a pioneer Michigan farm dwelling. There's only been one alteration to the exterior of the cobblestone house, um, and it's Italianate style wooden front porch with bracketed columns would added to the front facade. The barn was constructed on the property in 1986 as part of the farmstead restoration after the property was acquired by the city in 1972. The barn has no historic precedent, um, but it is in keeping with those once found on the site. The applicant seeks HTC approval to do a variety of improvements, including installing placards for a walking tour, extending a mulch path, modify and install fencing, install a kiosk, convert a woodshed into exhibit space, and install gutters on two porches. Additional work that does not require HTC approval, but is shown on the application, includes planting trees to screen the parking lot and restoring windows on the farmhouse. Um, here, I will do my best, but I will have to heavily rely on the review committee to help explain some of these um, photos. But um, this is a photo of the um, L edition at the rear. That's where the gutters are going. Thank you. Um, this is in the rear of the property. Not sure what's going to be proposed here. Yeah, that's where the mulch path is going to go. So the um, log cabin that's behind if you're looking from Packard it's behind the park service or the yeah the park service barn the modern barn mm -hmm. um, so the kiosks are going to be there by the you know across from the softball field and then a uh, the mulch path will take you past this area and down to the fencing you can see there around the animal barn it'll then go behind the animal barn um, and end there with direction taking you out to the placards that'll be around the house. So the house here is sort of behind Sherry, who's the person standing there um, yeah. through those trees. To the right is the area where there was an old bank barn that's going to be the fenced archeological site where the fencing is going to match the fencing that you can see there at the animal barn. Thank you. Um, Based on that, here is a more where the mulch path will go with that right. um, bank barn. I know that this is an interior shot of the woodshed area. Um, they'll be in uh, adding stairs, uh, landing and stairs, so that this egress door does not rely on the 
ladder. I don't see why that's necessary at all. Yeah. Um, here is more of the interior of the woodshed area. Yeah. I'm that's not certain what this is, but. Well, if you see the mound, the mound on the left, that's what's left of the bank barn. That's going to be the archaeolo archaeological site. So that's Thank going to have the fencing around it. Thank you. Can you see my mouse or am I pointing in vain? Yeah, yes. no, we can see it. Good. Okay, good. Um, log cabin? Yep, that's the log cabin and where the first of the signs is going to be. So the picture okay. was taken from about where the kiosk is going to be. Got it. Thank you. Um, this must be sitting near that spot as well. Yeah, I think I'm standing where the kiosk will be okay. in that picture. Right. Yep. There you are. Um, I think similar location. Um, this must be an example where the fencing is being extended. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the fence will come out too, and then the kiosk will be one side of the opening, and the end of the fence will define the opening for the path. Um, let me go back to the staff report and um, more more of the description and findings. Um, the Farm Association has put together a number of improvements to both help maintain the historic buildings and enhance the visitor experience. Staff believes that all of the proposed work is appropriate, does not intrude on the historic integrity of the site, and meets the standards and guidelines used by the HDC. Um, our staff report addresses the placards and mulch path extension specifically. Um, there are going to be eight of the placards addressing um, a specific topic, which are listed on the site plan drawings, and the mulch path will be widened and extended in a logical way. Regarding the kiosks and log cabin fencing, the existing stacked rail fence near the log cabin will be extended and form an opening leading to the mulch path. Two kiosks are shown at the site on the site plan, one at this mulch path trailhead and the other closer to the parking lot. I think that was around here. Um, the pro possible proposed dines are simple and appropriate. Picket fencing is going around the architectural area. That was the mound we'd mentioned. 337 feet of wood picket fence um, will be used to enclose the original barn foundation, keep visitors out of the area and preserve it for future ecological exploration. The woodshed exhibit space, it's attached to the rear wing of the house, currently used for storage, and there's the egress door that I mentioned from the second floor that needs to be made more accessible than the current wall ladder. The proposed proposal adds stairs to the egress door on the south wall. The existing loft on the west and north walls would be extended to allow the display of a buggy and sleigh. And freestanding walls would be used to display information without compromising historic materials. Gutters were mentioned, half round copper gutters to match will be installed on both rear porches. The house has had a large amount of water damage this year, and the work is critical to channel drainage away from the house instead of into it. Uh, other work includes window restoration and cedar tree planting to screen. Um, these activities don't require a certificate of appropriateness, but staff does appreciate inclusion here, so the project description is complete. Um, I'm going to go a little bit fast. These are the same, this is the same information as in the um, packet and the application. Shows the possible uh, kiosks and fencing types and location um, where uh, additional screening is proposed. Um, here's a wider view of where the, the woodshed addition is. And again, the interior. Some uh, more details about the new stairs. Um, Again, the windows will be restored. This is a representative window. Each window will be returned to its original location. Uh, here are shots of more of the building and its uh, wings, where the gutters are to be located. Here is a site map attachment. The mulch paths are um, outlined in the orange and red. Regarding the Secretary of Interior Standards, 
Standard number one is applicable. I have already mentioned it. It's talking about property will be used as it was historically. Secretary of Interior standard number two also applies, which I have already um, uh, read, as well as number 10. Secretary of Interior guidelines, um, some for building site are applicable. It's recommended to protect and maintain, including the historic relationship between elements, protecting and maintaining the building and building site by providing proper drainage and protecting uh, preserving in place important archaeological resources. Guidelines for district or neighborhood setting to identify, retain, and protect, including the building and landscape features which are important to the historic character. Ann Arbor Historic District guidelines for all new construction. It is appropriate to design new sidewalks, entrances, steps, porches, and canopies to be consistent with the historic rhythm established in the district. Regarding residential landscape features, it is not appropriate to introduce any new building, streetscape, or landscape feature that is out of scale or otherwise inappropriate. Thank you. Um, that concludes my staff report, and there is a uh, possible motion provided in the staff report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. DeLeo. Um, and just before we move on, I just want to pause for a moment. Um, we got some very sad news from Cobblestone Farm uh, that this week their longtime president, uh, George Taylor, uh, died. Uh, and um, he was president for many years. And I just uh, want to take a moment during the meeting to just mention that. And does, did anyone have anything uh, specifically to say about um, the president or um, thought maybe someone did. Um, but if not, I'll just mention um, that uh, from an email that is how I heard about it, um, that uh, he, he served as president for many years, many years, excuse me, he was a consummate uh, steward of the house, as well as the chief historian um, for families connected to the house. And um, so you know, obviously, uh, there was a lot of uh, a lot of love and effort uh, put forth by George, and, and we appreciate it. And it's um, you know, I, I, he certainly lives on in this project. Um, there's no doubt. So, uh, does anyone have want to say anything else about that? Or okay, very good. Um, let's move on to. Um, the staff report. So commissioners Fortner and Quijano, please. Um, I think a number of the items were described as we were walking through those site photos. Um, something that we that weren't brought up yet were some more of the kind of construction items inside the open barn area. Um, I'm not sure what drawing is best to show it. They've got there was a yeah elevation. i think there was a floor plan floor plan um, and elevation perhaps yeah. um it was page 15 in the packet anna mm -hmm. for your reference mm -hmm. um so looking at the yeah one of the questions we talked about with them for this new stair you know just wanted to make sure that it wouldn't be too visible from um, you know, detracting from the views of, of that part of the, the L and the historic building. And it really is tucked in within the enclosed portion of that storage area. Um, it doesn't protrude out into the open canopy arched area even. Um, so that should not detract from anyone's experience there. Um, and uh, I think, as Ms. DeLeo pointed out, you know, needed for safety. <laughs> um, and then the, there are existing portions of wall that bump out into that space already, and they're they're just increasing the depth, you know, a foot or two um, on each side to provide loft uh, storage space, display space. 
Um, and it was described that they would um, somehow can protect it or shield the items that are up there or um, block off the that lofted space from any potential um, touching of, of people on that landing. You know, they, they are aware of um, kind of safety and protection of the items up there and people using that stair. Um, I believe the applicant also mentioned, and they can clarify um, after this, there was gonna be a gate at the bottom of this new stair as well to prevent um, mystery users of the stairs. <laughs> Um, what else there is it doesn't show up in this floor plan in the drawings but there is so to the left hand side of the existing door that's drawn um actually that door yeah the door is on the upper floor but if you look to the left of that door and then go down to the lower level so kind of where there's an opening next to that new stair there is a window there um, just for your reference. I don't know if it shows in any photos. Um, but it they're not, you know, they're not touching it. They're not blocking it. Yeah, that that window. Um, mm -hmm. The stairs pulled away from it. So it, there shouldn't be any interference with that window. Um, and I, I asked about the downspouts for the new gutters that are going in um you know how are those just gonna extend out into the yard are they gonna go down below grade and it might be a combination i think some come out just onto grade already and they're working with the parks department um, to coordinate that sounded like that's all i've got to add Okay. Well, thank you both. Um, would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, and provide your name and address for the record. Hello, everyone. My name is Sherry McKay, and I am from 7489 Textile Road in Ypsilanti. Hi, Sherry. Thanks for joining us. Do you have anything to add to the, either the staff report or the review committee report? Uh, it was such a comprehensive report. We appreciate the time and uh, the detail spent. Uh, I'm here tonight on behalf of the Cobblestone Farm Association. And uh, thank you very much for acknowledging the passing of our longtime president, George Taylor. Um, he truly was the heart and soul of Cobblestone Farm. So we'll, we have um, quite, a, uh, uh, quite a standard to uh, keep up over the following years. We're excited to work with the city Parks and Rec on these um, several improvements to the historic district. Um, as mentioned, uh, quite a few of the um, uh, proposals are required for maintain, maintenance of the farmhouse itself, and then others are really to enhance the visitor experience. Um, a couple clarifications or answers based on the uh, discussion previous. Um, there will be a gate at the base of the stairwell in the woodshed um, for safety uh, to prevent uh, visitors from trying to uh, actually use those stairs to access the loft area that would be um, created in the woodshed as well as to attempt to have access into that um, that doorway and then uh, for the downspouts um, it's correct that there would be um, likely a combination of uh, downspouts at ground level as well as uh, below grade to really, <clears throat> excuse me, distribute the water um, uh, just firmly away from the farmhouse. Uh, and so we're looking at the grade levels um, and what's appropriate. Okay, thank you, Sherry. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? 
Okay, hearing none, I will now, uh, well, let's open the, the public hearing for this item. So this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about this application at 2781 Packard. So in order to electronically raise your hand, uh, press star nine on your phone if you would like to speak. Right. Let's see, Ellen Ranford, you will have three minutes to speak. Very good. You can press star six to unmute. Ellen, we can't hear you at the moment. So if you are speaking, please press star six and that will unmute your phone and then we'll hear you. That was... Hello. Oh, we can hear you. Hi, this Alan. is challenging. Can you hear me now? Hmm? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hi there. Please proceed. Uh, now, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please, please proceed, Alan. All right. Anybody now? Yes, we hear you. Can you hear us? <laughs> mm. Oh, man. Ellen, we can hear you. So if you can hear me, please, please start your, your public comment. Thank you for joining us. Can you hear me now? Yes, Ellen, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Can you hear us? Please, please proceed. Can you hear me now? Yes, Ellen, we can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear us okay? Will you, will you please give us your public comment? I don't think she can hear us. Kristen, any advice here? I am attempting to promote her to panelists. That might give some, I, hopefully that will improve the situation. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, we can hear you, Ellen. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Thank I'm you, so Ellen. sorry. I'm sitting in my car with my my phone hooked up to the to the car generator. I, I apologize for taking so long to get through. Uh, first of all, I I want to say that I was on the HDC as a representative to the Cobblestone Farm Association, and that's how. I became a board member of the Cobblestone Farm Association. And I want to say that it was a it was a great opportunity. And if you remember, every year George Taylor gave an annual report about progress on the farm. And um, so he was a familiar figure at HDC, but he was really a familiar figure at the farmhouse. He was there for every event, always contributing both physically. He built the, um, the split rail fence that goes around the farm property. He split wood for the kitchen wood stove when we would have an event and cook in the kitchen. And he was with us at the last um, regular board meeting on Monday night. And 
um, the review committee had just happened Monday afternoon, and it was a great, it, Jill did a great um, report on the, for the application, and Sherry gave all the information necessary to put before the HDC. Um, so George was right there for all of the preparation for this application. Um, and I want to say that the application gives the Cobblestone Farm an opportunity to expand the visitor experience. It gives people historic material to read as they're walking the grounds. We often have visitors who just stroll through the farm property. And if the museum is not open, this will give them lots of detail, um, both on the walking tour and in the woodshed, which has always just been a catch-all. And now we will be able to put the gig and the sleigh up on, uh, up on the rafters where they will be better protected or up on the, the shelves um, and make that space into a space that tells a little bit more about the farm and um, the operation of the farm for these many, many years. Cobblestone's a treasure for the city, and it's a way for the city to, um, to tell more about the history of the area. And I, I just I appreciate you all indulging me with an opportunity to um, sort of brag about what is possible in this application and um, what a treasure the Cobblestone Farmhouse is for the city of Ann Arbor. So thanks for hanging in there while I tried to get connected. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, that was a nice tribute uh, to George and our condolences to you and to, to everyone uh, involved uh, with Cobblestone Farms. Um, back to the public hearing. Is there any other, uh, anyone else? Kristen? No, no other callers. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again, Ellen. Um, okay. So now I'm, are there any, do the commissioners have any other questions or, or should we make a motion here? I, I don't think there will be questions, but okay. Uh, is there a commissioner who would like to make a motion on this application? Commissioner Fortner, thank you. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 2781 Packard Road, a contributing property in the Cobblestone Farm Historic District to install placards for a walking tour extend a mulch path, modify and install fencing, install a kiosk, convert a woodshed into exhibit space, and install gutters on two porches as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 1, 2, and 10, and the guidelines for building site and district setting, as well as the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines, particularly as they pertain to new construction and residential landscape features. Support. Support. Great, okay. That was moved by Commissioner Fortner, and I think I heard Commissioner Quijano with the second uh, on that one. Um, so is there any discussion on the motion? Um, I'm guessing there might not be because the the, um, the the application is well the project is is very uh, it's very clear what you're doing uh, with within um, you know just how the the application has has broken down and it's um, the application itself is very thorough um, so uh, does anyone have any comments or questions okay. Mm -hmm. Well, hearing none, let's just go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, so the motion carries. Your application has been approved. Please note you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. Thank you very much. Thanks to each of you for continuing to support Cobblestone Farm. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. Bye, Sherry. Bye. Okay, 
So now we'll move on to item F5, 529 Detroit Street. Ms. DeLeo, will you please give the staff report? Pleasure. Let me get to the beginning. Oh, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> this is 529 Detroit Street in the old Fourth Ward Historic District. The proposal includes two parcels, 529 and 521 Detroit Street. The 521 Detroit house was built in the 1890s. The 529 appears in appears by 1853. It's listed as Miller and Ryer's Planing Mill. And by 1874, it was called J.G. Miller's Manufacturer of Sash Doors, Blinds, and Moldings. In more recent history, it was home to the Warehouse Furniture Store from 1932 to 1950 and Treasure Mart from 1960 to 2020, or 2020. Best year ever. Um, this application seeks HGC approval to restore the exterior of the main building, including recreating the historic cornice and barn door openings and replacing non-original windows with aluminum clad wood windows to match the original opening sizes, demolishing the sheds on the north side, pave and formalize the parking lot, clad the rear stair addition and office addition with metal siding, construct a new second floor on top of the office addition and construct a new two-story stair lobby addition on the north side of the building. This work is being done to accommodate a church. Uh, this is the uh, close-up of the front of the building. Here is um, an addition to the uh, north side. Um, the restoration of the historic mill building includes removing the plywood installed around the top of the building, which I believe you can see a little bit here. <coughs> uh, restoring the brick underneath and rebuilding the front cornice based on the, 19, on the 1874 Washtenaw County Atlas illustration and other sources. There were several barn door openings that are currently bricked in. This plan restores wood doors that are non that are non-operable in the openings to look closer to the original appearance. Current windows are non-original and many openings have been altered. Here are some more pictures of the exterior of the building. Proposal returns these windows on the historic mill building to their original size, including removing the storefront display window on the building front and replaces all of the current windows on the historic building with six over six aluminum clad wood windows with applied muttons based on the style, style seen in a 1936 photo, which is at the end of the application attachment. The north side of the building has a large open shed. Uh, we'll go back to an earlier photo. A large open shed built toward the street and along possibly over the north side lot line. It was used by Treasure Mart for furniture storage. It is not from the period of significance and this propo proposed removal is appropriate. The parking lot is currently gravel proposed to be paved and formalized with spaces delineated as required by city code for site plan projects. The driveway would be extended to wrap around the north side of the building as a one-way drive. I have a few pictures of the um, gravel parking lot driveway now. The oldest addition to the rear of the building is the office. It dates to the period of significance, but has no distinct character defining features. It is proposed to receive um, several new metal windows and new openings and have a second floor added, be reclad with metal siding. An existing service door on the back would be lowered to below grade and accessed by a new stairwell. Other rear addition is a large modern three story stairwell that replaced an earlier addition in approximately the same footprint. This stair addition would also be clad in metal siding and the rear door currently leading to the basement would be reworked. I believe, here we go. Um, tall, narrow metal windows and new openings would be added to this addition. The style is modern, but compatible with the historic building while getting, giving a subtle church-like vibe. 
A new two-story entry lobby on the north side features brick cladding with a two-story glass and metal entry facing Detroit Street. The north elevation is a row of four tall, narrow windows. I think I can fast forward to some renderings. Here we go. Oh, slowness. Here we go. Um, North Elevation has a row of four tall and narrow windows. The most striking feature of the new entry is the roof, which has standing seam metal roofing and a tower-like presence. This roof is the only work proposed in the application that staff thinks does not meet the standards and guidelines followed by the HDC. The mass of the tower is appropriate and character-defining feature of the historic district that it obscures are minimal. The roof tower, however, calls too much attention away from the historic building and centers the eye on the new entry and tower feature when those should be secondary to the historic building. Both the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines and Ann Arbor's say that new additions should be placed on non-character defining or inconspicuous elevations. The new north entry lobby is appropriately situated against the historic building, but because of its height, staff does not believe it meets the language of the guideline that says the size and scale of the addition should be limited in relationship to the historic property. Staff believes a low roof would accommodate and conceal a large skylight. The most suggested below that we have in the staff report is conditioned on the metal roof not exceeding one third of its current height. The height of the proposed roof is not included on the drawings in the original staff report application, but has since been provided by the um, applicant team. And I believe it was emailed to commissioners and posted in the packet this afternoon. Um, um, and staff is recommending that final design be approved by the HDC officers. The reduced height will return the return attention to the mill instead of the roof tower. Uh, at this time, no work is proposed on the four unit house at 521 Detroit Street. Um, there are some planning notes in the staff report. The two lots are separate, but they will need to be combined before building permits may be issued. Um, and the majority of, um, we will, um, I will make a final note regarding the staff report that the majority of work being proposed is completely appropriate and the restoration of work especially is appreciated. The tower roof height and design are not compatible with the historic building and therefore staff recommends either a conditional approval or postponement to next month if the applicants are willing to design a less prominent roof and resubmit drawings by August 27th. Let me make sure I've covered everything in the presentation. Uh, here are again of renderings. Um, this is um, viewing slightly southward um, from the north side of the building. This is a view slightly northward from the south of the building. You can see here where the um, parking lot is being more formalized. Uh, here is the proposed addition. You are looking slightly northeast. Um, and you can also see the new or restored windows and the metal cladding on the rear addition. Regarding secretary, applicable Secretary of Interior standards, one, which I have previously mentioned, two, which I have previously mentioned, nine, which I have previously mentioned, and 10, which I have previously mentioned, are applicable. Regarding the Secretary of Interior guidelines, for additions or alterations for a new use, we it is recommended they um, are inconspicuous from the public right of way and do not damage or obscure character defining, defining features. Additions are recommended in, in a manner that makes clear what is historic and what is new. Guidelines, uh, again, for additions and recommendations, um, consider attaching the addition both in terms of the new use and the appearance of other buildings in the district or neighborhood design for the new work may be contemporary or maybe reference design motifs from the historic building either case should always be clearly differentiated um, it is also recommended to design additional stories that are set back from the wall plane and are as inconspicuous as possible when viewed from the street and new additions uh, should be constructed so that there is at the least possible loss of historic materials. 
Also, locating the attached exterior addition at the rear or on an inconspicuous side of a historic building, limiting its size and scale in relationship to the historic building. Not recommended includes designing new additions so its size and scale and relation are out of proportion, thus diminishing the historic character, and duplicating the exact form, material, style, and so forth of the historic building in the new addition so the work appears to be part of the historic building. Not recommended includes constructing additional stories so the historic appearance is radically altered, and designing multi story greenhouse additions that obscure, for example, um, damage or destroy character defining features. Guidelines for building site. It is recommended to retain the historic relationships and remove non significant buildings, additions, or site features that detract from the historic character. Also, not recommended to introduce a new building or feature that is out of scale or of an otherwise inappropriate design. Specific to windows, a Secretary of Interior guidelines recommend designing and installing new windows when the historic windows are completely missing. It is not recommended to introduce new construction that is visually incompatible or destroys historic relationships within the setting. Guidelines address entrances and porches. It is recommended um, to identify, retain, preserve entrances and their functional and decorative features that are important um, the Ann Arbor Historic District guidelines, design guidelines for any addition says it is appropriate to place a new addition on a non-character defining or inconspicuous elevation and limiting the size and scale in relationship to the historic property, designing a new addition in a manner that makes clear what is historic and what is not. It is not appropriate to design an addition that overpowers or dramatically alters the original building through size or height. For commercial entries, it is appropriate to replace missing original doors with a design that matches original doors remaining or compatible new design. For paved areas, it is appropriate to install new parking areas which are compatible with the scale, proportion of yard area and characteristics of the historic district behind buildings. Um, and, and thank you very much. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Leo. Okay, the commissioners uh, Fortner and Quijano were on the review committee. Can we please hear your report? Um, I think that the staff report was pretty comprehensive in that, you know, everything seems to meet the standards except that top of the tower. And um, I have to say that standing across the street and looking back at that building and imagining that tower being almost a full story higher than the current roof line um, would make for a pretty uh, <laughs> eye-catching, looming feature that I think definitely would not meet the standards. Right. And, and I think we should get clarification from the applicant on this because I, I wasn't quite clear, even though we talked about it on site. Uh, looking at the renderings of the of that North edition. So there's the kind of the roof cap that uh, Commissioner Fortner described, but also the way that the masonry volume is shown in the rendering. It looks like it's matching the height exactly uh, of the existing building, you know, not um, you know, stepping down uh, from or offsetting from, from the existing roof line, um, which is often what we're something that we're looking for. Um, and may, you know, with it being also masonry construction uh, could be a bit not differentiated enough, perhaps. Um, so maybe we can talk about that. Um, a number of items are are being restored. A lot of window openings, door openings are being proposed to be restored, um, which would be wonderful. Um, and I'm trying to think what else we are really looking at on site there. Oh, there is. I don't know if any photos really show it, but when you're 
on the rear of the standing on the rear side of the building, you can see there's a chimney, historic chimney that's already been taken down um, in height previously. Uh, it didn't look like it was in great shape. Um, and when you're standing on the sidewalk or even across the street, it's it's not visible. Um, so really, it wasn't until I got to the back of the building that I realized it was there. Is that it, Commissioner? I have to add. Do you have more to? No, more that add? that is the end of my comment. Well, thank you, and also thank you to Commissioner Fortner for your staff report or for your review committee reports. Okay, <laughs> now we'll have the um, we'll have the applicants unmute your microphones, turn on your video if possible, and and it looks like we've got um, a few of you here. So, would you please just all uh provide your name and address for the record um and then let's go back and and feel free to to fill us in on anything you'd like to comment on you know based on the staff report or what you heard with the review committee <clears throat> my name is gary cooper i'm uh the architect on the project um, my address is 2900 brockman boulevard ann arbor michigan Bart, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Bart uh, Bryant from Redeemer Church. I'm 7500 Brookfield Road in Plymouth. Thank you. Jeff, can we hear from you, please? I'm Jeff Perkins. Uh, my address is 5643 Plymouth Road in Ann Arbor and I am the construction manager for the project. Thank you very much. Okay, so are, does anyone have any comments based on, on what you've heard so far? I'm talking to the applicants now, yeah. I'll go ahead. Um, Thank you. I, I think the staff report was uh, quite comprehensive and uh, we appreciate the acknowledgement of the restoration work that we're proposing. Uh, the goal is to take the historic building, the main mill building, and restore it to the late 1800 appearance as uh, illustrated in the Washtenaw County Atlas. And therefore, putting back the front cornice, returning the uh, original door open, or restoring the original door openings and installing uh, uh, new doors in those openings, as well as all the windows and window openings, um, is the primary scope of work. The rear addition, the office addition, um, I think we certainly agree with the city that it has no character defining uh, features at the moment. It, it had been built and rebuilt and expanded, and in the process, uh, the masonry wall is in very poor shape. Um, uh, new openings have been cut. We don't really have a whole lot of evidence of what may have been there before. Um, so we simply propose to clad that. As well as 1976 stair addition, which was a fairly large addition that was installed to create a, a rated egress stair for, for the building for the three main floors, basement, first floor, and second floor. It also was designed to um, support a feature elevator, which wasn't installed in the 70s. We are, we need to install an elevator and luckily we have the space within that addition to do it. So we can keep it out of the main, the main building and have it service the parking lot, which is halfway between the first floor and the basement level. We are proposing the new stair uh, lobby addition as a, a main entry from the Detroit Street side. Um, the stair addition will be a new entry um, from the parking lot side. The stair lobby addition is necessary, one, to, to give us a better sense of entry, 
so that you don't enter directly into the main building or the main space. But also we need a second means of egress from the second floor. Up until, I don't know, 15 years or so ago, there was a fire escape that provided that second means of egress. And that was taken off the building at some point. And <clears throat> restoring that fire escape is, is not uh, allowed by code today. So we're not allowed to, to reintroduce that second means of egress. So the stair lobby uh, allows us to uh, create a stair as well as a lobby so that you would exit from the second floor onto a balcony and down a stair that winds out, winds around and then exits the front door. We need some height to, in order to do that. Um, and I think that's why we have a two-story um, stair lobby addition. The intent was to keep the masonry portion of the stair lobby slightly below the parapet line, the parapet on the building does slope backwards. And when you look at the, or downwards, if you, if you look at the uh, elevations uh, or the perspectives, it's a little bit unclear, but the parapet wall is not flat. And so the, uh, the point at which the elevator lab or the stair lobby meets the parapet is, is significantly below um, the front elevation of the building. Also due to the fact that we're raising the front elevation to install the new cornice. We understand your comments about the size and volume of the stair lobby addition. And it seems to me that the, the main concerns are the height of the roof. We were trying to create a, um, uh, a church-like, um, uh, appearance on the exterior, uh, we wanted to give it somewhat of a tower effect, but we certainly weren't trying to overpower the existing building. I think it's important to note that you don't see that out, you don't see the roof when you look at the, the building from the south or the southwest. Um, and as you approach <clears throat> the building down along Detroit Street from the south, you never see this addition until you get past the front of the historic building and turn and look. The view that we show is from the uh, from the northeast and that's the only place where it becomes so prominent. In your proposed um, uh, motion to uh, to approve this based on some changes, it's a little bit unclear to me what you were asking, and I did send a couple of drawings and an email requesting some clarification about what the staff was asking for. Um, the way we interpreted it was that they didn't believe that the roof should be more than one third the height of the brick portion of the building. And we'd like to know if that was the intent um, or not. Okay, well, I'll table that question for a second. Are there other questions that you have or other comments that you have? Or is there, um, are there other comments that maybe um, other, other people from the team have? Jeff or Bart? Or Bart or, or Jeff, do you wanna weigh in on anything or? Well, yeah, just, um, uh, I, Yes, I need to take responsibility for that roof uh, off of Gary's shoulders because that is a result of a meeting that he and I had sometime back in the design process. And I thought that the, um, the, 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 my reasoning behind it was that, you know, this building was never intended as a place where people from, let's say, the general public would go. I mean, it started out as a as a mill, and then later on it was turned into a store, and they put that horrible storefront glass in the front, and that still didn't signify the entrance to the building. And so I was looking for a sense of arrival to the building so that people coming up could say, yep, there's the front door, that's where we go in. 
Um, and so it just sort of naturally evolved into thinking about a steeple or something like that because it is a church use. But it was really never my intent for that design to, uh, to overpower the historic building in any way. Um, I think we can accommodate the, the concern uh, that, um, that Jill has raised. And uh, uh, actually, it's Jill Thatcher who, um, who wrote that staff report. And we did discuss this with her. And I think we can probably come up with something that, that works for everybody. Um, but as I mentioned, it really wasn't our intent to make that part of the building overpower the historic thing. We were just looking for a basically identify the entrance to the building for the people that are going there to use it. Very good. Uh, Bart, do you have any comments or? or? Uh, I, well, for one, I would like to thank you all for your time and scrutiny and uh, affirmation of our efforts here because we truly are trying to uh, retain and support the historical character, uh, character of the building. <clears throat> Although in some ways it looked like a blase warehousey building. So we are trying to uh, highlight its, its best attributes. So I defer to my professional partners on those regards, but those, that is certainly what we are trying to do. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate the comments. Um, Okay, so we do have a question that was tabled um, from Gary. And so I just, um, let me address that uh, right now and we can have the other commissioners uh, weigh in as well on it. But basically there was, a, there was a motion that was written and there's a, so based on, um, this, this is about the roof and, and basically ba based on the fact that the roof, there, there was a, a hunch that the roof was not going to be appropriate and possibly that the, um, this application would be turned down. So the way the motion was written, uh, it says it's right in the middle of the motion and it says and constructed new two-story stair lobby addition on the north side of the building on the condition that the new stair lobby roof does not exceed one third of the height of the current tower roof and is approved by the officers of the HDC before the site plan application is submitted. So um, we don't have Ms. Thatcher here. So it, I think that we're all gonna have to interpret this, but, but my interpretation of that is, I guess the question is, well, one third of the height of what? And what I see is the height of the current tower roof. So I believe what Gary had read was one height of the current tower. Um, the tower is much taller than the roof. So unfortunately, it's going to be a smaller number in my estimation when we're talking about one third of the height of the current tower roof. I believe the current tower roof is 11 feet. So one third of that, um, it would be the maximum height allowable by this motion of the tower roof that would be redesigned and then that redesign would be approved by the officers that that's the way the motion is written uh, and that's the way i'm seeing it and i'll just ask any any uh, any commissioners uh do you see it uh differently i'll turn to the applicant next but just commissioners do you do you agree or disagree or have any comments with that explanation for the question that that gary had uh, for what is worth from staff, I would agree. I believe that um, Jill Thatcher is simply referring to the height of the standing scene metal portion of it and that it should be one third less than what is currently proposed. One third less than proposed. N I disagree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's two thirds less than proposed. <laughs> one third of mm -hmm. the, yeah. Yeah. Is that, yeah. is that, do you agree, uh, staff, that that's, that's what this other staff is, is yeah, I, in the motion? We could change the motion, obviously, but this motion yeah. as written is that. Yes, I'm for certain agreeing that it's, we're talking about just the standing scene metal yeah. portion. 
And I believe that it should be one third of what is um, on the drawings right now. And I would agree and confirm um, it is written so that um, if the commission chooses, the commission would basically be approving, um, approving this and, but, and delegating the final design of this roof portion to um, the, uh, what is the, the word, the um, officers committee yes. um, so that it would not need to return to the full committee. Right, that, that is the full commission. I agree. Yeah. Right, that, uh, uh, any other comments from commissioners? On just, that? just one um, that I, I'm not trying to muddy the water here, but I, I agree with that uh, understanding and reading of um, Ms. Thatcher's proposed motion here, but I also don't know, like, where did the one third come from? Well, well let's have a discussion so on that later. Yeah, okay. so just we'll get to that. We're just trying to answer uh, Gary's question and then we'll get to the actual motion <coughs> that's proposed sure. and then we can change the motion. We can have discussion on the motion and all of that. But sounds good. Yeah. So just on the clarification for Gary, are, are we all in agreement that that's that's what was presented here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So then that that sort of wraps up then the the applicants uh comments sort of in, introductory comments and so now we're we're gonna open a public hearing we're gonna hear from the public if there's anyone out there and then we're gonna have the motion and, and have all the discussion so um let's open up the public hearing for this item it's an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the application at 529 detroit street Public comment may be made by calling 877-853-5247 and entering meeting ID pound 978-6401-4515. So if anyone out there would like to raise their hand electronically, uh, you should dial star nine on your phone. All right, Joseph Maynard, you will have three minutes to speak. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm Joe Maynard. I'm actually with Washington Engineering. I'm the civil design engineer for this project. Um, I don't know why I wasn't uh, included on the panel, um, but I did want to let you know I'm here tonight if you have questions regarding the site civil portion of the parking lot and so forth um, on the project. Um, if you need my address, is 3526 West Liberty Road, uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you. Is there somehow, can we promote Joe to the meeting somehow, Kristen, or, or is it not possible? He's in. He's in now. He's in. Great. Thank you for that. Okay. Thanks for that, Joe. Appreciate it. Any other callers? No other callers. Okay. All right. So uh, we can close the public hearing portion. Um, Okay, so now at this point we'll make the motion and I guess that the only reason we wouldn't make the motion right now is if someone from the applicant team would prefer the other option that staff gave, which was just a redesign and a, you know, a, a postponement, basically, you'd have to get your drawings in by a couple weeks from now, I believe that the date was given and Is there any desire um, on the applicant team for that approach or should we move ahead uh, we would request that you move ahead with the motion um, we would prefer to avoid the delay um, and as I said earlier I think that we can um, I think we can come to, to to something that works for everybody and if we can avoid having to come back in a month it allows us to submit to the Planning Commission in the meantime so that's our preference and we hope that you can uh, see it that way we sure will so is there a um, is there someone a commissioner who would like to make a motion could I make one comment sure I just wanted to note that the the height of the existing roof is 11 feet from the top of the brick to the top of the very top of the roof. And so this ordinance would limit that. 
to or this proposed or <clears throat> a motion would limit the heights to three foot eight inches. Just throwing it out there. Yep. Thanks for that. Okay, any anyone, any commissioner, please. Oh, I'll do it. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Fortner. I move that the Historic District Commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the portion of the application at 529 Detroit Street, a contributing property in the old Fourth Ward Historic District, to do the following work with conditions. Restore the exterior of the main building, including recreating the historic cornice and barn door openings and replacing non-original windows with aluminum clad wood windows that match the original opening sizes. Demolish the sheds on the north side, pave and formalize the parking lot, clad the rear stair addition and office addition with metal siding, construct a new second floor on top of the office addition, and construct a new two-story stair lobby addition on the north side of the building on the condition that the new stair lobby roof does not exceed one third of the height of the current tower roof and is approved by the officers of the Historic District Commission before the site plan application, application is submitted to the city. The work as conditioned is compatible in exterior design arrangement texture material and relationship to the surrounding resources and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines, especially those for all addition and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 1, 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for alterations for a new use, addition, additions, windows, and district neighborhood setting. Support. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Fortner and seconded by Commissioner Anderson, I believe. Okay, so, um, yeah, that, that was a very long motion. There, there, is, um, there is a lot going on in this project. And the, I know we've talked a lot about the roof, but um, just to acknowledge the, um, there's a lot of uh, historic preservation going on here, um, just with, uh, with preserving, uh, I guess, rehabilitating the, the existing structure, you know, to, uh, as was mentioned uh, by the applicant. So I, I just want to chunk this up here if there is, I mean, and also I just want to mention that the, the application itself is extremely thorough, um, very detailed, and there's, there's great drawings. And, um, and uh, especially, obviously, with the design intent, the, the renderings are so appreciated because it, it really um, is, is so helpful. For us, so so thanks for submitting such a great application. Uh, so just to kind of guide the discussion here, are there any comments on? Um, I'll just say everything except the uh, entry addition and roof. I, I don't even let's let's not even talk about the entry addition or the entry addition roof at this moment. Um, any other aspects of the project that, that anyone has a, a comment or question on? All right. I mean, it's not surprising because the, the application is so thorough and the staff report itself was so thorough. And um, I think it's clear that, that everything else is, is meeting the guidelines uh, in, in, in a very clear way. So then that brings us to the addition. And I don't know if we want to talk about the addition separately from the roof, but I, I think it would be helpful because um, it kind of can be taken separately um, because we do have the issue of the location. You know, it's, a, it's an addition. It's not an addition on the rear. It is an addition on the side. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's and as Commissioner Kihanu stated, it, it, it seems to align with the parapet, but um, the applicant the the where it aligns with the parapet is actually lower than the front parapet so that that was um informative and interesting from the from the applicant but um does, does anyone I'll, I'll 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 hand i'll hand it over to anyone who has comments or questions on the um 
on the entry edition itself. Maybe we can leave the roof off for the for the time being. Okay, so this is Commissioner Epperson. I can, yes. I guess, start on that. Um, so, I probably going to talk about most of it all together, roof and and addition itself. I do yeah. think size, scale, and relationship. It's it's actually quite large. I'm trying to look in the documents for you know dimensions, but proportionally, it looks to be the actual addition itself. The width of it is almost about the same. Almost about half of the width of the existing building, not quite, um, but it's it's close. Um, with it being the same height as the existing building and abutting right up to the existing parapet line at the location that it does, I think those two factors, the the massing, and that it's set so far forward, is starting to detract for me from the um, from the the original building. I think that Commissioner Cajano started to bring up, up a couple of points that we usually look for in additions um, that help um, just to kind of separate that addition from the existing building and, you know, scale it down a little bit more, which, you know, one would be definitely our, the roof height is lower than the existing roof height or parapet um, and that we usually request some sort of a step back. Uh, whether or not, you know, in this condition, it would be something that um, had more of a, a recess for a little portion at the where the two buildings adjoin. Um, I do think that this design overall, I, I think it is differentiated in its, you know, window treatment. It's um, the the types of windows, their proportions. I think the entry is very well defined with the, the nice, large, uh, almost two-story volume opening with the larger doors. I think that's very clear. Um, but I definitely think the massing is, is starting to detract from the historic resource and the roof is definitely distracting. Um, so I am questioning whether or not the one-third is even enough. I, I, I feel that the roof should actually be lower than the existing parapet height. Are there other? Um, I'll leave it there for now. Okay, sorry, I thought you were done. Uh, no, we'll, you're good. <laughs> we'll come back to you uh, as needed. And um, can we hear from someone else? Uh, sure. I just I I tend to agree with the the reservations and concerns that Commissioner Epperson described. Um, you know, we yes, we the the roof, the parapet. Uh, top of parapet does slope back. Um, but I think as people are walking across the street and perceiving that those two volumes together, the you know, the front on elevation, yes, it's lower. The new volume is lower in height than the historic building, especially with the cornice. But as you turn the corner and experience those volumes, I think you, we start to blur the line of, um, of that visual and um, I think it, it detracts from, from the original building um, and yeah I, just, I don't want to dwell on things too much but yeah the the one third also not sure where it came from nor would it be enough um, to to distinguish the two um, buildings Right. We, we should get back to your comment then, Commissioner Cano, because it's a good one. I mean, the, the one third really was just kind of one option from staff mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, yeah. was like, maybe that would be OK or maybe not. But yeah, I I um, I think that if. Um, either the entire project gets denied or something is done with with uh, our kind of how this is this discussion is heading you know and so if if one third isn't the right phrase or you know is it isn't the right uh dimension or you know we can we could obviously change them amend the motion to something else um obviously we don't want to make this a design session so right yeah mm -hmm. 
would we be comfortable just saying the the redesign needed to be um, you know reviewed by the executive committee without the one third specified right because it seems like it's not just based on the discussion so far it's not just the the roof of the tower it's perhaps also the tower and i think Correct. the conditioned motion didn't really speak to the the masonry tower itself in terms of any revision so. well if if we just completely re remove the roof from the tower is you know what are what are people's thoughts on what they're seeing with if you if there's zero it's a flat roof it's a parapet kind of and and you know the roof is lower or is that not really a, a valid question <laughs> yeah i think there's still like i said i think there's i think commissioner Cano just stated or even commissioner fortner that it's there's some design i think elements i, I still think the scale and massing is overpowering without starting to say it needs to drop here or shift or you know something needs to be reduced in some way is i guess the most generic yeah multiple I think, things i think could be reduced yeah i think our concerns go beyond the roof yes mm -hmm. it's sort of that. the secondary um that it's not it's not sec secondary enough <laughs> in the, correct to the <laughs> historic building and and that that's not just driven by the roof the, mm -hmm. thank the roof. you understood okay let me let me ask a question of the applicant um, because it wasn't totally clear to me about um, I don't want to shift so quickly so let me just acknowledge like I guess we've got the entry portion it's there's there's a couple um, goals that it's trying to achieve. One is to uh, to show itself as the main entry for this building. And then two, um, and, and so that's why you need the big scale, uh, which I, I, I'm seeing the double doors and, and the, the two height door achieving that. Um, then there's the other, um, the other goal that you mentioned, which was about uh, ADA access, um, sorry, from the second floor, not, not ADA, uh, about uh, egress access from the second floor. And when I'm looking at the second floor, the proposed second floor plans, it's not entirely clear to me what the program is on the second floor and why you need the access. So can we look at the second floor proposal quickly? And um, and maybe you can explain to us the the requirement, the height requirement based on the um, the egress. I'm not seeing what program, unless there's two floors of worship. I assume that the worship was two was a double height space, but I, that might've been a bad assumption. And there's actually two floors called worship. Would you like me to come in? Uh, yes, please. <clears throat> the worship portion is uh, at the second floor. And the first floor is kind of a multi-activity space. It's um, a little bit overflow in terms of worship, but it's kind of every day, um, multi-purpose space so if you look at the windows on the second floor in that perspective of the uh of the stair <clears throat> stair lobby um the height of the windows for some reason the uh, top of the window is slightly under six foot eight and um so what we are proposing is that as you as a second means of egress from that worship space, people have to exit through the wall onto a balcony and they have to turn and go down a winding set of stairs to get out. Um, when they step out into that space, they need an eight foot clear by code height. So that eight foot clear is about the top of the 
brick arch around the the opening so that would kind of be a minimum height but that's the ceiling height so then we have to have ceiling structures so you know we could probably bring the brick portion of the building and a flat ceiling down to about 12 inches below the parapet um, and still make it work but we couldn't go much lower because then we wouldn't have the required eight foot clear head height okay thanks for that explanation just just to be clear um you okay so now i'm a little confused at what i'm looking at did did you say how what say that the last part again how far yeah. below the parapet height can we go because i'm thinking the that we could drop the brick portion where it turns from brick to uh, metal roof. Yeah, we could drop that line about 12 inches, and then be confident that we could put a structure, you know, a, a roof sandwich in there, and then still get an eight foot height inside mm. on the balcony. Okay, so are is what you're proposing? Would we see the roof, or the roof would be behind a parapet, and it wouldn't be a a roof that we would see? It would be, yeah. I mean. If we're not going to do one third and, and have a, a small man's roof or something, then yeah. we would just consider that the, the parapet height of the uh, stair lobby addition yeah. and the roof would be flat behind it. Right. Okay. Well, that it seems to me that that proposal would would it be sitting much better with some of the some of the concerns that we've heard so far. So does anyone want to comment on what they just heard um, from Gary? I I agree that it's kind of heading towards a more uh, amenable proposal, um, but I think we would the officers would still need to see a. Um, I would like to I would yeah. like to comment on one thing is that the stair lobby addition doesn't come out any farther than you know the current um shed roofs and it doesn't disturb or hit the building where the current you know uh construction is um granted that construction's you know kind of from the second floor windows down but it actually the wall of the stair lobby addition the front wall with the door is proposed to sit on the wall of the stair to the basement, which is a large retaining wall below grade. So just as a reference, um, just behind uh, the current uh, front wall of the stair lobby addition are the current doors, uh, which are glass storefront doors and, uh, and a large opening that has been created that wasn't original. And so we're, um, not bringing it out really much much further, if any further, than than the disruption on the building already. I'd also like to say that um, just to accommodate a stair to go that height takes up most of the space in the uh, in the stair lobby, and so that if you're asking us to reduce the footprint, um, one we wouldn't be able to use the the basement egress stair wall for support we'd have to create a new wall behind it and then we'd also have some trouble you know making a gracious stair reach the, the height of the second floor within the lot are there any other comments or i i think that if not we can maybe talk about amending the motion and then continuing discussion but are there before we do that, um, are there any are there any comments? It seems to me that we should amend the motion um, based on Gary's quick thinking to um, to talk about the height of the new stair lobby roof being um, at a maximum twelve inches below 
the height of the brick, the existing brick parapet? Um, Ms. Commissioner Epperson, I have, yes, I guess, one follow-up question for that. Yeah. So if I'm looking either at the rendering, you know, of that north view and even just a north section elevation, um, if the stair tower or main entry lobby, if that does get reduced to just one foot below the existing, then there's also that existing there, the, the new addition in the rear would then start mm -hmm. to peak out, which maybe maybe that's acceptable, but I just want to be clear if we're, we're going forward with some sort of dimensional adjustment, if, if that's, if there's other things that are going to be impacted. Um, that either we, we talk about that now or if we feel like that's okay. Or is there a possibility if, if this stair tower reduces to one foot below, what happens to the addition in the back? Can that also reduce or does that need to stay the same height? Um, I believe it, it was our intention to always keep that um, addition in the back lower than the tower. Um, okay. If we drop the tower 12 inches, we would either keep that addition at the same height or try to slightly lower it to keep it below the exist or below the uh, stair lobby addition. Okay. okay. I guess I start to get a little bit concerned when we are, we're asking so many moving parts to be put into a motion. Um, if there's a way that we feel like we can yeah. do that appropriately, I, I'm for it, but I'm a little concerned that there's going to be some impacts to design that may not just be something that only the officers should review. Right. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, I, I agree. I, I guess at this point it's, it's, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good point. I think that from what I heard earlier was that in gen, you know, besides this part of the project, you know, no, there's no comments. And right. so, um, I think that, I think that probably other than just denying the project <laughs> outright, you know, the, it seems like the best way to move forward here is to amend the motion, uh, and see, the updated drawings by the officers, you know, the officers would approve the updated drawings um, before they get a site plan. Um, and then, yeah, if things are broken at that point, then, well, the officers will have to deny the, the project at that point. Um, but it, it just, yeah, I think, I guess I, I'm proposing that, that we move forward with amending the motion unless someone has yeah a comment uh in another direction um just to okay yeah. so other other comments and we there, there could be more discussion after we amend the motion obviously but i'm just wondering are, are there mm -hmm. before we amend the motion are there other comments uh, just kind of a yeah. clarification question for um, commissioner epperson so was part of your concern of this uh, motion revision now, um, giving that specific 12 inch max, um, because not knowing you know, how it may impact other adjacent construction, mm -hmm. is it, is, are you looking for a way to um, get to the, the intent of our, uh, condition without you know saying like what if it what if it needed to be a different dimension <laughs> or something yeah you know. um, was that part of your comment yes that's, that's i guess i'm sorry if i'm not being clear i i guess my concern is that there's the height is is one thing i understand that the I'm concerned that, okay, if we, we decrease the height, that's going to have other impacts on other parts of, of the design, um, which I think has been stated clearly, but I'm not sure, I guess, and maybe this is the way that I'm viewing the 
the project and the guidelines that just that that reduction is going to be enough in the the massing um i and that there may be other design impacts that that has that would okay. need to be reviewed by the commission and not right. just the officers. Okay, I hear you. And so let's have that discussion. Let, let's amend the mm -hmm. motion because that's gonna yeah. move us forward. And mm -hmm. then we'll discuss that, discuss the amended motion. And then that's when you can bring up uh, other, other issues. But I think like we're, we're moving forward. We're, we're, we're totally yeah. at a standstill with this motion. So I think we'll maybe move one step forward, at least to a vote if we amend the motion. So, uh, Commissioner Fortner, could you please amend the motion? I believe. Well, I guess I'm not sure that we've agreed on how we're going to amend it. Um, okay. Are, do we want to go with a, the very specific, you know, quoting a dimension, or can we say that they, they will submit a redesign of the stair lobby to make it more, secondary to the historic building submit that redesign for approval to the um my, my my recommendation is that we have at least give them some more specific direction so that because that's what the standards say right now and that mm -hmm. and this is what they've this is what the application is so let's give them either we don't have to say 12 inches we could say just below the pair. I mean, if the mm. issue is above the parrot or below the parapet, then let's at least say that the addition should be below the parapet. Um, if, I mean, I, I can't imagine any design above the parapet that then we would, you know, be moving forward with. So does, I agree does with that. that. Sound, uh, yeah. Does that okay. sound okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So Starting at the, on the condition. <laughs> on the condition that a redesign of the new stair lobby roof to be below the parapet of the historic building is approved by the officers of the Historic District Commission before the site plan application is submitted to the city. That was clear to me. Thank you. Did staff get that amendment? Double check with Kristen. Kristen, did you get that amendment? Would you um, repeat it um, sure. just for in for insurance? And I, I do understand it was starting at the um, on the condition that a redesign of the new stair lobby roof to be below the parapet of the historic building is approved by the officers of the historic district commission before the site plan application is submitted to the city. Uh, redesign of the new stair lobby roof to be below the parapet. Yep, of the historic building. Um, and then picking up. Um, is approved by. Is approved by. Okay, yes, got that. Thank you both for that. Um, okay, so now we've got a motion that seems more in line with most of the discussion, but there are still some kind of outlying questions about just the, I guess the location of the addition and the scale. So um, let, let's hear those so we can get those out on the table and, um, and kind of get through to the discussion. So I guess for me, it's it's still it's, I, I understand the the depth that are the required width. I think the reduction in height is, is helpful in the overall scale and proportion. Um, I think there's the other issue in, of it how it abuts directly to the existing building. How that addition is you know 90 right at that the face of the new addition is 90 degrees to the original the existing building um so i'm just trying to work through you know is that is that going to be 
maybe it's enough of a differentiation that it's you know the the design itself I think differentiates but again it, it is that gonna is reducing the height going to help in that scale I, I'm not quite convinced yet that it, that it does um, and I don't have much more to say. You know, there, there's a couple of ways we've done, we've seen this where there's like a little bit of a hyphen in between the existing and the new that really kind of distinguishes a little bit more, at least could reduce the scale of that, that front facade. I think the, the protruding archway around the entry helps immensely with that. Um, <clears throat> right, you, you, the the relationship of how those two walls come together and um, how that's detailed yeah compared to other methods that we've seen um, okay well i i actually have a question about something sort of unrelated to the tower and so i'm going to ask a question that'll give everyone a chance to think about how they're going to vote or, or maybe have another comment and then a vote. But I do have a question that I want to ask. So I'll ask it and then um, maybe we'll wrap this up and vote. Um, but I just, this is sort of in light of um, the other incredible project that I've seen by this team. Um, uh, and I just, I'm curious about, could you please talk about uh, ADA access to this building and particularly I'm curious why um, there's not ADA access to the front but it does appear that there's adequate ADA access so I just in, in general what's the ADA access to this building um, well, since you brought up the other project that we that this team worked on um, for the rest of the Commission that aren't aware of it it is 611 you. and a half East William <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, the shant and one of the difficulties that we ran into there where we had to provide barrier free access to the building was the only place we could do it was at the front door because of site limitations and the front yard in that case was so small that we could not make a ramp work so we had to put a rather unfortunate lift device that um, I don't know, Bart could weigh in on that, but I doubt that it's ever been used, but it's awfully ugly. And they don't make them uh, that look worth a darn. And we're trying to avoid that in this case. And since the elevator is clearly going in the back, um, in the back area of the building, we thought we could make the barrier free entrance at that point, um, rather than at the front entry to the building, because we can't make a ramp work to get up to the height that we need to from the sidewalk. The ramp, it, it, I know it's a little deceiving in the perspective, but the elevation difference between the first floor of the mill building and the sidewalk is two feet. <clears throat> and I believe that the uh, front doors are about 30 feet from the sidewalk. So uh, we would be into an ADA ramp that's um, 8%, which would require uh, guardrails, handrails on both sides, and it would have to switch back once or twice to get up to that front door. Um, we are creating a barrier-free accessible sidewalk that goes along the north side of the building to the back door, and then obviously the barrier-free parking, and uh, the elevator is located at the rear entrance. Um, so uh, once you're in the building, um, you can access all floors and all wings. Uh, the office addition currently, the floors do not align with the existing mill building. So uh, we're rebuilding those existing additions so that all the floors align with the, uh, the floors of the mill building. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, so I think I'm going to ask, are there any sort of final comments? Um, maybe maybe bring up an actual, uh, it's always helpful, you know, if someone reads, reads uh, the, the actual uh, standard that they're kind of stuck on, um, I find that helpful at least, or, you know, any, any final comments here um, before we vote on, on the, the current motion? 
scrolling through it. Yeah, yeah I'll keep <laughs> it. <laughs> I can't see me. So I have, I guess, two that maybe uh, pose guidelines for all editions. Um, not appropriate designing an edition that overpowers or dramatically alters the original building through size or height. So I guess maybe I just want to hear from the other commissioners how they feel about that edition. I'm feeling like it's 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 a little bit overpowering. Um, but I'd like to hear what other commissioners think about, um, yeah, with the modifications. Having, being on site, I don't have a problem with the location of that addition. It is really tucked in that corner. Okay. Um, the only concern I had was with the, the roof. It, you know, as as Gary was saying, you don't even see it, or somebody was saying, you don't even see it until you kind of get around one, you know, and are really in front of the building. Um, I think if the the roof were less different, then um, it would really sort of be tucked in there or, you know, give the appearance of being tucked in there. So I don't have any problem with the, you know, sort of the secondary location of it. Um, that that historic that's a big building the historic building there mm -hmm. is a big building um and so you know like i said being there on site and sort of looking at that i don't have any any problems with the the placement or the massing with the exception of the roof okay. as as proposed now well it, it's my opinion that the um i think that's the right guideline to look at yeah and i that's why i agree with you i i think with with the roof as motioned um and we'll see the drawings but uh, you know i'm envisioning something that that doesn't now overpower the the existing structures mm -hmm. but yes we will have to see it um yeah. and approve it if if this goes forward uh, does any any other commissioners, um, Commissioner Kahano, do you want to weigh in one last time, or are we ready? Uh, no, I think um, I think we've addressed the one of the major concerns with this yes. revised mo motion, and um, we'll we'll see what is brought forward. Okay, well. Um, it was it was a thorough discussion, um, but but let's vote right now. So, um, all those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay. The motion carries. Your application has been approved. Um, please note that you must apply for any required permits. Um, from the city before beginning your project. And, and I just wanna make sure that it's clear, like the, the timing, you know, what it says in the amended motion. Um, does the applicant have any questions on dates or anything like that, or, or is it clear? No, I, I appreciate the motion and thank you for the vote. Um, I look forward to bringing this back to the executive committee or officers or, or however you term it. Um, I think we're pretty clear on what we need to do before we go to planning. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Okay. <clears throat> so we're on to hearing F6, but um, I'm not sure if we can uh, actually move forward with F6 because of the mm. number of um, commissioners we have here and the fact that um, one of the commissioners will have to step away because this is their project. Yeah, I, I believe we won't have a quorum. <sighs> so um, I, I, do we, I do we probably believe still have to have a public hearing. But. I was just going to mention that I do believe yeah. we need a public hearing opportunity at least. Um, yes. Would the commission like me to give the staff report anyway, or um, maybe even just do a, a one minute introduction? I, I'm comfortable either way, but considering the hour and that we need to postpone it, um, I leave it up to the chair. I, I just want to confirm that everyone's in agreement that we do have to postpone it. That's right, because we'd be at three commissioners. Right, it, it cannot be yeah. passed. Yeah. Um, it would be an also, automatic denial. Um, I just have a question about that. If there's a public hearing, I still need to, re this is Commissioner Epperson, I still need to recuse myself, correct? So is that, at that point, how does that, Probably. I think during if we the, don't have a quorum. Mm, I don't. I, it's just a logistical question. Can you hold question. it? <laughs> I, I think that you know for for I Zoom purposes, um, Kristen will move you into the lobby. So I, I think that you'll be able to hear, but to us you'll be gone. But we'll bring you back in then for the remaining items of the agenda. Good. Let's was go. that the was that the question? No, I, I guess the question. Because there it wasn't exactly, but I don't think you can do I Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. Um, can the meeting still continue with three members? Yeah. Or four members that's present? Yeah. Um, like that's not technical, that's not a quorum to vote. Um, but can the public hearing still be held? Is, is that your question, Anna? Yes. I have the same question. So what do you think, Alexis? Um, well, you know, honestly, I don't know. I think that in the spirit of transparency, I feel it's safe. I would open the public hearing. And just in case, I don't know if there's any participants. There are no callers would, currently. Um, okay, yeah, but I would say in the spirit <laughs> of transparency, I don't think we can go wrong with opening the public hearing. We're gonna do it over again anyway. Um, because it's postponed i i no discussion or um, right um vote yeah i'm 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 going with more common sense and gut i don't actually know let's do it okay um all right anna i will uh move you back out okay all right so um we're just going to go right to the public hearing on f6 621 east william um, we'll skip the staff report and the review committee. Uh, I, Although so for the, just for the sake of the record, I'll just introduce and say, this will be a public hearing for 621 East William Street in the State Street Historic District. It is for um, exterior lighting um, on the um, William Street side of this building. Very good. So um, the public hearing is open now. Do we have any callers, Kristen? No callers. Okay, so then we will close the public hearing. And that is all that we're going to do for this hearing, unfortunately. And um, that is the last hearing. So now we're moving on to item G, new business. There is no new business. And so now we'll go on to H minutes. And so we'll look at the minutes for June 10th, 2021, and July 8th, 2021 and ask if there's any comments or corrections on the minutes. I, I have no comments or corrections. Okay. Okay, so hearing no comments. Um, we will, sorry, I lost my place, but I think we'll just approve the minutes as, uh, as they are. 
Okay. And we'll, um, yes, we'll move on. Um, we'll move on to I reports from commissioners. Would any commissioner like to share something with the commission? Hearing none, we'll move on to item J1, assignments. So, Ms. DeLeo, this is where we get, uh, Ms. Thatcher usually signs people up for the, uh, yeah, the next I review that, committee. Yeah, I believe that Commissioner Ross has already volunteered. So I'm just looking yes. for one more volunteer. I don't know if it's normal that uh, if there's no volunteers, I don't know it's normal if the chair assigns someone, maybe who's not present. Yeah. I don't okay. know. <laughs> I can do it. Okay. So we have um, Commissioner Fortner has volunteered um, to round out um, Commissioner Ross, who has already volunteered. Thank you both. Thank you to Commissioners Ross and Fortner. Okay. And now we're on to K-1 reports from staff. So we've got the uh, July 2021 report attached and really usually you, you would just take questions. So any questions for Ms. DeLeo? A lot of activities. Um, in case there is a question, it's my understanding that boards and commissions will continue on Zoom through the end of this calendar year. Um, so that has been set. I do not know what is uh, happening in January. Perhaps it's not been decided. However, I can, uh, for your calendar's sake, um, the Zoom meetings will continue for all boards and commissions through the end of this calendar year. Thank you. Very good. I don't have any okay. questions. Well, then we'll move on uh, to item L, concerns of commissioners. Are there any concerns out there? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to M1 communications. And I believe there are no communications for this month. So that will move us to item N, adjournment. I now adjourn the August 12th, 2021 HDC meeting.